E3 2018 has wrapped up and there is a ton to digest. Lots of press conferences, lots of announcements of games, and lots of emotion. So, what stood out? What are we looking forward to? Who do we shit all over, besides EA? What games do we think will not see the light of day for decades? We break it all down on our annual E3 recap of downloadable content next! Welcome to Downloadable Content. I'm Brian, and with me we have a full boat talking E3. We have Ron. Hey, everyone. We have Ronnie. Hi. We have Shanna. Hey. We have Nick. And I'm back. This is... I, I, no matter what we do, we can't seem to get rid of you. No, no. <laughs> Chucked me in a river last time. I, I'm I'm just glad Shan is here. I mean, this is like two episodes in one season. <laughs> I know you caught me on good weekends. I, um, <laughs> I, we lucked out. <laughs> but we, we did. It's like, oh, the Parasite Eve and E3. Ooh, always good to have Shana. Oh yes, absolutely. Hey, I'm glad to be back. So. You know, Sh I mean, Shanna has to play catch up now because she used to be she used to be on so often, and now Nick and and Ronnie have just blown past her. It's okay. Just keep announcing some good topics, and I I'll make it work. I'll catch up. Okay, I, I, I will kill <laughs> people if I must. I keep saying that, but somehow Ron just keeps being on everything. <laughs> what do you mean? I mean, I've been on like. I missed like four episodes just now, haven't I? I I have to look at the at the list, but I mean, you you have there has been a noticeable lack of you this season so far. Yeah, well, saving it for all for E three. How about that? All right, you're just gonna blow your entire wad on E three. All right. I mean, there was a lot this year, so yes, yes, there is. So before we dive into what is probably going to be a very long discussion, so you might want to strap in for this, lay in some provisions. Every single episode can be found on our website, dlcpodcast.com. You can find out upcoming recordings. You can give us feedback, give us ideas for future episodes. Although we are getting near the summer break. we are So I know that after... This episode or the next episode, that'll be it until September. So every single episode can also be found on iTunes, YouTube, Stitcher, and Google Play Music. So all there for you. All the different ways to get downloadable content into your ears. Just make sure you have plenty of Q-tips. So it, it, to prepare for this, uh, right now you should pause the podcast and you should go get rations, bring beverages. Like, you're strapping for, for probably a long one. Just a tub of popcorn. That's looking interesting. Yep, that, 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 that's fine. You know, get like the movie theater sized bucket of popcorn that'll feed you in a small country. Because for... we see you getting up during the podcast, listeners. Oh, wait. And you go, and you go, we're going to call you out. Oh, yeah. We've installed security cameras with the help of the NSA. In wait, wait, wait. Where, where are you going? Where are you Get back here. We, we recorded four hours of footage. You're staying here and listening to this. <laughs> You're getting your wishes, so sit down. <laughs> oh, e, e, E3. And a, as per usual, the start of E3, I was at a Renaissance fair. So while I, while I wasn't... Hey, nanny, nanny. 
Uh, it was the uh, the Capital District Ren Fair in Albany, which I call uh, Tuxedo Light, because a considerable number of the performers from the New York Renaissance Fair make the drive up to the Albany area for for lots of fun. So it was great, but it was also the start of E3. So I'm getting text messages and Facebook and, and Twitter notifications of all the stuff happening going on in E3. I'm like, yes, all stuff I will catch up on later. So as per usual, we're going to do the E3 episode by press, uh, by press conference order, the way they presented at E3. So I believe the just, first one was EA. Just, just overall, I would say, I think this has been a, this was a very exciting E3. Like there's a lot more of interest than there usually is. <laughs> Yes, I, I, I definitely, definitely agree there. Um, I mean, I was approaching this E3 the way I have for the last few years. Basically, it's like, I don't care what everyone else does. What's Nintendo got? So you acted like the, uh, the rest of the 80% of people who typically watch E3. <laughs> there, there's, there was, that from what I've, from what ev- everybody I see, it is, and there's a very clear divide it is either they're watching it for Nintendo or they were watching it for Bethesda and nothing in between. <laughs> Which I thought was just like absolutely hilarious. It was just, and especially with the friends that I have on social media, like the amount of Nintendo fanboys far outweighed everybody else. Well, it's, it's funny because for me, like because of my group of friends, like you and I were the two freaking out over this, Brian, and then everybody else was uh like Bethesdaing it all up. And, uh, and, yeah, and, and, yeah. and, and like over the- meanwhile, I'm sitting here going, neither one was the best though. <laughs> yeah, I know we like after the first couple of days, like I get a message from Ron saying that there are going to be words. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I, I, messaged, I messaged Brian for those unawares. I messaged him after the Bethesda conference and just just just, get, just the generic cryptic statement of there will be words. There will be words. So I'm kind of looking forward to the the, the rant that you have saved up over the course of the week. Uh, it's so, yeah, sorry. It's just um, I'm I'm eagerly awaiting. How Ron is gonna shit all over anybody because there were some uh press conferences that went up that the general consensus was basically like really mm-hmm. R- really yeah like that that like that, like yay <laughs> like, yeah like, like the, my my wife's comment on it um was how are they still a company uh and my note on the my serious note on my notes for EA was conference. My thoughts were just a load of shit. All that, right. That's... So with that in mind, let's dive in. <laughs> let's dive. Let's get the shit because I mean, let's get let's get the EA bullshit out of the way first. They went first, and probably for very good reason. But um, <laughs> you, 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 you know that they actually got like. Their, you know, fans, and I'm using that term loosely, to host their event, first off, for how much money did they have to give for you to actively want to host their event? Me, personally, I'm expecting six figures. <laughs> I, I mean, I, they I, I, have, I... They have fans. I don't understand them, but they have them. Uh, I, I, I have two words for you. <laughs> World soccer. I know. <laughs> EA, EA survives off of the sports titles that we all make fun of for their yearly roster update releases. And not Call of Duty, <laughs> a.k.a. Battlefield. <laughs> yes. Yes, okay, yes, we'll, we'll give you that. That's. Uh... So there were some good things in the EA conference. Um, at least, like, I, uh, we saw Unravel 2, and that looked adorable. Uh, co op, which one is... low high lone highlight of the whole bunch. Absolutely, I'm I'm going. I'm trying to find the gems in the turd right now. Uh, and, and it was it's co op, <laughs> which to me seemed like a theme in the like. It, everybody seemed like they were announcing something co op, which is strange. It feels like the '80s all over again. No, it looked like a friendship ruiner. <laughs> <laughs> 
So Battletoads? No, not Battletoads. No, this looked like, um, it, it kind of reminded me a bit of, I know this is the wrong game because I cannot think of the correct one, but Bubble Bobble. <laughs> Ryan would know because we both have had a lot of hate relationship with multiplayer Bubble Bobble. Uh... I love that game. That game was my childhood. Thank you for the reference. There you so, go. One, um, one point to house Nicholas. <laughs> yeah. So the other thing, too, is I believe the other thing that came out of this was Anthem. Am I correct in that? Am I going nuts? Anthem, a.k.a. the Destiny knockoff. Yeah. They yeah. didn't show that much outside of a mission, which I didn't think that was smart because this is probably going to be one of EA's like heavy hitters either this year or next. I think it's a 2019 release. It's February 22nd, I believe. Yes, that's why I have on my notes here. But they didn't really show a deep dive into the mechanics of the game. Is this a like Destiny or a Borderlands? Is this a loot and shooter? Is this kind of more of just a story-driven co-op game? They really didn't say much of anything outside of your mercenaries and there's no loot boxes which congratulations ea you have completed the absolute bare minimum of human decency uh, just, just, <laughs> a random aside, just, just a random aside i feel bad for the guy that had to resent for the star wars battlefront soup. oh yeah how uncomfortable did that guy look? oh like this was a guy that, like, you know he's on here because he he, he, he drew the straw straw, and it's just like, all right, I got to eat the bullet for this. It's, it's actually it's actually hazing. He's a he's a new member, and that's that's what you have to do when you're a new person in no, EA. No, I figured he was the guy that got caught sending the, uh, uh, you know, bad emails. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I mean, I again, like, he, he did the best he could, given what he was talking about, but yeah. it doesn't, doesn't help. Meanwhile, we are finally getting the CIS um, factions for Battlefront, which, again, that should have been out day one. The Clone Wars was kind of a big thing back in the PlayStation 2 days. Yeah. It's not like yeah. they wouldn't have the, the data for that as well. The uh, Sea of Solitude was a thing. Oh, what was Sea of Solitude? Oh, that's I don't the, that's the, the indie game. game. That's the cutesy indie game. That yeah. was in the EA press conference. Yeah, that was in the. Oh, I, yeah, it's, it's no. A, there, it was. It. I'm pretty sure EA is publishing it for them. It was created as an indie game. Yeah. It's, so it's an indie. Yeah. So those who aren't aware, this is the brainchild of a female game designer writer, I believe. Yeah. From Germany. Yes. Yeah. And she is talking about how a individual goes through life. And the demons within themselves. Yep. I, was her basic description? It looked like I this like that was probably the highlight of EA for me. Like that looked like it could have potential. Mm -hmm. I mean, it seemed interesting, but I, I just get hard to get invested into the indie games because you need the origin engine, and I really cannot be bothered to get or origin. So. Yep. It's going to be one of those, it's nice, but I kind of wish it was on other platforms, and I know it won't. I'm, yeah, I'm, we'll waiting never. For, I'm waiting for EA to someday, someday cave and just go to Steam like every self-respecting company. That's but they won't. The they they, don't, they, <laughs> they don't, don't respect themselves. <laughs> they don't respect themselves, and they don't respect their consumers. <laughs> yep. Both. We also got our yearly iterations of FIFA, NBA, and Madden. Yay! I, here, here, here was the part that made me laugh about about at least John Madden football. First was they had the Steelers wide receiver Juju Schuster Smith and the current Madden NFL World Champion. Did you see the guy's ripped jeans? Like uh, this guy won several hundred thousand dollars winning the Madden tournament. You couldn't afford a better pan pair of jeans. No, the, that that that's designer that's jeans. They're they're worth I, ten thousand dollars. Uh, yeah. Okay. Sure. Let me just grab a pair of twenty dollars jeans. Let me just do some rips in I, it. I, there, I, I, I'm, I, I'm hundred thousand air. I know. Like it's, it's fashion it's today. The style, man. Like it's it's it, dumb to us, but it's like I get it. It's and style. Jude, 
and Schuster Smith's pants were somehow worse. For those unaware, his pants were like this weird, psychedelic 80s, 90s drug trip sort of thing. And yeah, then, and he took was, a bath yeah. in the Hawaiian waters. Yeah, and, 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 and also keep in mind, too, he was wearing a backpack on stage, too. Oh, yeah, I kind of forgot about the backpack. Now, here's the, 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 the other one thing I didn't quite understand. If you're going to feature Madden NFL football, why the fuck are you featuring the Cleveland Browns? You know, the team that went 0-16 during the regular season. <laughs> Not once. This is the twice. This is the second time they've done it in the past, like, 10 years. No, uh, the last team that did was the Detroit Lions. Oh, I'm sorry. I, it, again, they... No, it, it's easy to confuse. I understand. I mean, Detroit, Cleveland, they both suck. <laughs> the, the, the takeaway I got from this was FIFA's coming to the Switch. Which... I think I think I think honestly I think it's a good thing because with how many people are excited for the Switch, just having it on another platform means that those fans get serviced. Which on one hand, EA, on the other yeah. hand, EA gets more money. As much as much as you know, EA gets shitted on by a bunch of fans, ourselves include ourselves included. EA games on Nintendo Switch systems is good for Nintendo. There is still yeah. a market, regardless of what we think otherwise. There are still people who are going to be playing these games, and to have them on the go for the Switch is a big selling point. That's that's something I was... Oh, sorry, Shauna, go. Oh, it's... Oh, sorry, I was just thinking that's something that could be good as well, just because, like you said, it is a game that... I think there's a different crowd for all of those games, for FIFA, for NBA. And they might be a little bit more casual. They might be a little bit more Switch savvy than something like, say, having it on a PS4. So it's good because it spreads it out. I think Switch players are a lot more, they're not always like the hardcore, hardcore, hardcore gamers. They might be into just something along the lines of FIFA. So uh -huh. I, think it's, I think it's good to kind of spread that across the board. I'm uh, I'm curious at what the sales will look like for the Switch compared to the other systems because with it being a portable, I could seriously see people buying their copy for their PS4 or their Xbox and their and a Switch copy. Right, that's true. I don't know. Here, an adorable puppy. Yeah, sorry, I, that's neighbors across the street. <laughs> we call them the Yip Yip Brigade. Oh, they have. They have like four or five dogs that they walk at the same time. But anyways, I'm sorry. <laughs> that, that that's okay. I mean, I, initially I was looking at Anthem because that's the next big Bioware game, and you know they're 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 leaving the world of Mass Effect, so you know it caught my attention, and I, I'm I'm curious to see where it'll go as it gets further along in development. If this is a game, I'm gonna want to get or or not i mean I, uh, it, it, ju it just seems so curious to me that it, it didn't seem like they didn't put a whole lot of effort for something that is going to be a brand new franchise entry for ea you would thought that i really would have thought they would have deep deep dived into it a bit more well we've got a, we've got a while between now and february we're, we're gonna uh probably get some more news about it or it'll get pushed back that, that actually <laughs> is a theme i noticed throughout e uh, throughout all of e3 it seems like the january february time is the new november when all the big releases are coming out and here's why a lot of people were getting crowded during that october november december mark to try and you know be for the holidays and we're realizing oh Look at Nintendo. They're pushing their stuff to the first quarter, and they're having great sales because they're not trying to beat this crowded market, and everyone's replenishing their money after the Christmas big Christmas spending sprees. We should do that too. No, I mean it makes sense. It's just it's interesting to see, like pretty much, like I I, I just kept seeing coming in January, coming in February, and I'm like, wow. Normally, like everything would be coming in November. It's also Q4 financial sales year and of getting sales numbers in before the end of the fiscal year. Yeah, yeah that too. Yeah, but I, 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 I'm, uh, yeah, I'm more inclined to go there. Yeah, everyone else saw was like, oh, Nintendo did, Nintendo did great. Let's crib off them. 
Which, <laughs> and now all the games in the November, October, November are going, huh, Christmas sales, yes! Hey, hey Brian, <laughs> how, how many times do you think we can bring up Nintendo before we get to their press conference? Um, a few, probably. <laughs> just, 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 just... Generic, uh, a few. A, a Moving few. On. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on, yes, so... Little little counter on screen Nintendo references. Yes, <laughs> minutes minutes gone by since Nintendo was uttered. <laughs> uh, at least at least you said minutes, not days. <laughs> It'd be like that workplace counter. You get to like two, and then it's like ah shit. Yeah, basically. <laughs> so the next one up uh, was Microsoft. Yeah. Uh oh. So, I, I, I detect some notes of. Hell. No, no, actually, not for me. I think uh, Microsoft is one of the better press conferences. In terms of raw conference material, I think Microsoft's actually the best conference of E3. Or that uh, second for absolutely. me, but yeah. So Microsoft now having to uh, go after EA. They were next in line. Um, they covered a lot. <laughs> Yeah, they did. Yeah, it yeah. was a... It I was had a, a very little... low bar for Microsoft. It was basically just do better than EA. I know that's a low bar. <laughs> just do better than EA. You, fo- you followed EA. I, you, I don't know how you're going to top them, but, you know, do your best, Microsoft. And it appeared, so, by and large, that they did, so... I mean, keep in mind, too, that e- uh, for those unaware, Microsoft is probably in a distant fourth of consoles this generation with like first being playstation 4 second being the switch three being your local pc and then fourth being the xbox one i thought you're gonna be like the the ouya i i, th- I thought about going with your with your cell phone but i think the pc is probably a bit more better than that and you know the thing again f- for me you know because for me you know what was going to be shown from sony and microsoft the games that they showed off are most likely going to see an eventual PC release. Okay, that's that's the thing. That's the thing. Is like half of those titles they announced that are exclusives also show up on the on the Windows Store, which means yes. they're going to be on PC. Yeah. Which because means... of, because of their um, thing last year, the Play Anywhere initiative. Yeah. Now, so for Xbox and PC, which again I stressed it last year, I'll stress it this year. Smart move. Yes. It's a good thing, but it, it it's a good thing from their side just to try and get people to stick with Windows 10 or um, have the cross-playing between PC and Xbox One. But the problem still lies in the fact that you're talking about people playing a game that you want to be a console seller. They can just play it on their PC if they already have one. They're not using it as a console seller, though. Like, the they're they're getting this if you're buying it from windows store they're getting a cut and that's all they care about they not they i'm pretty sure they they're not giving up on the xbox but i don't think they're trying to overtake playstation like they've basically gone okay we're not winning this generation so we're trying to make the money we can for the future and I think that it's Microsoft refocusing on the software aspect. I th- uh, uh, it, it, it's a, you may be a do- day late and a dollar short, but I think they are starting to realize that you know it's it's gonna start it's gonna start being the software that's gonna drive everything, not just you know the Xbox or the PC. So the fact that they showed a 50 game showcase of everything from all different walks of uh, gameplay styles genres difficulties i think you know to get have that something for everyone was i uh, was the right way to go for microsoft yes some people will argue and crit- criticize that that's what sony did last year but if you're gonna take a page out of someone else's book that's a good page to take also keep in mind too like so in terms of the, some of the games they showed so the first thing they showed off and they opened up with was a, a new Halo game called Halo Infinite? In- Infinite. Infinite. Halo Infinite. Yeah. yeah. And so this is going to be on the Xbox One, but it's also going to be on PC, which I believe is going to be the first time we've seen a Halo game on the PC since the, the first one. 
So, uh, I think Halo 2 was on PC, but I could be wrong. Yeah, I don't remember either. But, again, like that that's relatively noticeable. Um, they had Forza Horizon 4, which, again, like, again, like uh, it's a racing game, but like, it looked really nice, and they tout their 4K 60 FPS in that, too. So, good, good on I them. I was a little surprised that Bethesda did show up, considering they were going to be on later that night, but they did show off Fallout 76. It's set in West Virginia. And great song choice, by the way. This yeah. was an interesting thing, because like right before E3 was when we got the announcement of Fallout 76, and that got a very mixed reaction when it, w mm -hmm. when, when it was made known that this was not going to be, uh, you know, another single. This was going to be an online multiplayer experience, and that turned a lot of people off. It's targeting a completely different demographic, and it's trying to bring a younger audience into the Fallout crowd. And whether that's going to be successful or not, like, they're, not, they're courting a different demographic, and they're typical demographic is not happy about it. Clearly. <laughs> yeah, well, we can get into the Fall 76 more during the Bethesda stuff, because they yeah. gave out more information there Agreed. Than, yep. than what they gave at the uh, Microsoft One. Yeah. True. I am, you know, uh, the games they showed, I mean, the games that I'm looking forward to the most, the Ori sequel, Ori and the Will of the Wisps. That looks yeah. so beautiful. Oh yeah. my yeah. god. Uh, it, Have, having now played The Blind Forest, is it now it's like okay okay don i will uh you know tell me when will the wisp comes out and you'll have my money yeah yeah, the, yeah this is uh, you know this is a day one purchase immediately i am now that i have my new pc up and running i'm actually replaying ori in the blind forest properly without having to experience lag <laughs> <laughs> so it's like was, I, it, was it really that intensive it was Anytime we got to uh, any, yeah, the, the basically your quote unquote boss scenes in the three major areas where you have to get the hell out, mm -hmm. that's when my computer would slow the fuck down because there was too much shit happening for my PC and my graphics card to take. It's like your particle playing... effects. Yeah, I was gonna say, it's like you're playing Double Dragon with three enemies on the screen. So I'm playing this. I'm playing this game again n now with a current and shiny new PC, and I'm like, oh, the cutscenes sync up with the music now. This is good. Um, <laughs> th this is nice, and I'm just, I'm just Poor Brian. <laughs> falling in love with this game all over again. And Ori and the Will of the Wisps. I saw this, and I'm just like, yep, I'm. All the feelings. Mm -hmm. um, I never cared much for Crackdown, but if I get to play as Terry Crews in Crackdown 3, sign me the fuck up. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's not even oh, Crackdown, wow, yeah. it's not even Crackdown 3 anymore. It's just Terry Crews the game. <laughs> I'm okay with this. <laughs> I'm not saying I'm not either. I'm, I'm just saying like they, they've kind of given up on the whole Crackdown franchise and just like buying into the Terry Crews hype meter. Which, it, I'm not saying it's a bad thing, I'm just like, it, it, that's a thing now. I didn't know that, that this is a thing. We, we, we have gone for a circle, though, me has become as the master now. Which well, I, I mean, which I he love was... It... Sorry, Sean. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, he was always in those Old Spice commercials, and that's what I felt like. I'm like, this is Terry Crews fresh off of an Old Spice commercial. His head's about to explode. He's about to start <laughs> screaming about Mountain Scent or something. But seriously, Bear I... Glove! Yeah, exactly. Bear glove! Um, but yeah, this was like Testosterone Rage, the trailer, and I loved every minute of it. <laughs> if Old Spice doesn't do like in-game ads for Crackdown 3, I would be sorely disappointed. <laughs> we're going to have, we're gonna have inception levels of memory in Crackdown. I, I yeah. love that he's, I love how aware he is of it too, and you can tell just from his, uh, his little cameo in Deadpool 2. <laughs> oh, he loves it. Yeah, it's amazing. Just follow him on Twitter if you haven't, al if you aren't already. It's just he is a shining beacon in the wall of outrage that I see every day on Twitter. Now that we've, now that we've finished the Terry Crews press conference, uh... <laughs> <laughs> like, like he should have presented. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that would have been fun. Like, I like. 
I don't know. Wait. I don't know if you've uh, like he hosted for one year. He was the host of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Oh my god! <laughs> Terry, Terry Crews win. Terry Crews wins E three. We're not quite sure which company he was working for, but you know. Yeah. Um. Next do you want, was. Do you want to talk oh, about, go I was gonna say because I'm trying to remember Microsoft thing. Like they had a lot of stuff. They had more yeah. uh, Division Two. I think had some more we got information Sekiro, there. Shadows Die Twice, the new From Software game. That was Kingdom Hearts on the Xbox for the first time. Uh, was Sekiro on Xbox? I thought that was Sony. Yeah. Sekiro was a Microsoft. Okay. Yeah, it was Microsoft, I, but I'm my, thinking of the other one. I'm thinking of the other Asian my, game. My my uh, lear, my uh, my list here. I got Sekiro. I got the awesome adventures of Captain Kid. Yeah, the, the strange. Yeah. Oh, no. oh yeah, I got was... stuff to say about that one. Yeah, I got the Battle Toads. I got the yes! Gears, the Gears yes! of War, and the Gears of War pop and tactics, and then Cyberpunk 2077. That's what I got on my notes. Yeah. I'm. I saw uh, the the Kingdom Hearts three announcement you know, for for Microsoft and went, well, oh, that's a bit of a jump, but all right. Allegedly, if it comes out, but um. <laughs> it's coming out. They've got a release date for it. It's probably coming out in 2019. I don't think it, I don't know if it's coming out in January, but it's probably coming out in 2019. Yeah, allegedly. Uh, <laughs> you just said <laughs> to me that Mike is not sold. This, uh, for as long as this game has been in development, I'm treating it as vaporware until it actually comes out. <laughs> Brian, I'm pretty sure you only do this to anger the fans at this point. Uh, maybe. <laughs> Allegedly, but uh, we uh, we there were all there was also news. Uh, Devil May Cry Five. That looked that looked pretty sick. Which means I gotta finish playing the rest of the franchise. Yeah, same. Because I, I played one and two. I I have three, which which I need to get going they, on. They just need to Kingdom Hearts it and put out a collection with all the other games. You know, this is Kingdom Hearts 3. This is going to be the game that, you know, if it comes out, will be the uh, game that prompts me to get the PS4. And then I have to buy, like, the the compilations because I have not picked up a Kingdom Hearts Dude, game in decades. Don't don't worry about it. There's They announced the Kingdom Hearts Ultimate Collection. It's going to have all of the games, including three. Yeah, that's on the PS4, Brian. Yeah. And it'll be coming out at the same time as Kingdom Hearts three. But we'll be talking no, about that no, in the Square Enix one. No, Pardon. it's coming. It's coming out earlier. I think it's out now. And if you buy it now, you get Kingdom Hearts three free when it when it's released. Oh, they oh. wouldn't do that. I don't think would they. I don't think so. I think not. I, I, I thought it was coming no out. Money. Oh, let's see. Yeah, I'm. Pr I thought it was coming out with three. Yeah. No, it's all. It's already in the in the PlayStation Store. I've actually. Got it on the screen right now. <laughs> okay. okay. Nick going going above and beyond. He, he is. He's, he's going to prove us uh, wrong. Oh, okay. So it's me just just being like, and here's my credit card. Let's see. Dragon Quest Eleven pre-order. Kingdom Hearts Ultimate pre-order. Uh, let's see. Battletoads pre-order. I wonder how much of the video games industry's uh, pre-order sales come from the week of E3. And my wallet is crying right now. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> yeah. Probably a, probably a, a non-sizable amount. Like yeah. there's a there's a lot of stuff that got shown. I think ten percent would be like a lowball estimate. Eh, probably, I'd be. I'd say the similar area probably. Another game I'm looking forward to that was shown at Microsoft press at the press conference. And now I saw this game at e at PAX. <laughs> Last year, we happy few. Oh, that, ditto. That has this has been an early re this is in in early access right now on Steam, and I cannot wait for the full game to come out because it looks creepy and horror and so right up your alley, right up my alley. And also, this game has an extra level of intrigue because this game uh, was refused classification in Australia. So, Brian. Paint me a picture for somebody who apparently missed it during the press conference and has no idea what you're talking about. Okay. Um, I, 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 can, I, can, I, can I take a stab at this? Uh, go ahead. All right. So imagine a 1960s era, like, 
drug-fueled trip where everything's bright and cheerful and hunky-dory and things are all nice and sweet and colorful and you're playing games with like with like dragons and they're giving you pink ma magic fairy dust to, to huff and smoke and all that stuff. And that's your everyday oh, life. Oh! Oh! I... No, I didn't see it at E3 this year, but I, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. I saw... Yeah, okay, I saw the previous time they, they put that out. I Yeah, and that's, yeah. That's, and that's if you take the drugs. If you don't take the drugs, you see the world how it yes. really is. Yes, okay. I didn't realize they put out more info on that this E3. I, I completely missed that. They did, and I am so looking forward to this game. And the fact that it's not going to be allowed to be sold in Australia only highlights the irony of what the game is about. <laughs> yeah. It's just, it, this is a game that you can tell the people who made this probably were on some sort of illicit drug and are trying to convey their ideas gleaned from their drug trips to everyone to see and enjoy. And this is... It going to be a, this is going to be an experience one way or the other. Yes, and I am I am really looking forward to this game when it comes out. So that that's that's of the of the games they showed at the Microsoft press conference. It's it's for me. Uh, I'm really looking forward to Ori, We Happy Few, um, Devil May Cry Five. Can we talk briefly about Jump Force? Yes, we can talk about the, um, the, 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 the weird amalgamation of Soul Calibur level graphics and details applied to Luffy, Goku, uh -huh. and Naruto. <laughs> Frick, I, I don't know how they're going to do freaking Ryuk and Light from Death Note. I saw them in the trailer and I'm like, he was the I don't trailer. know how they're... Oh, I was just saying, yeah, he was in the trailer. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how they're going to work them in a fighting game, but sure, whatever. <laughs> um, so they had a talk with a develop with uh, Bandai Namco afterwards, and while they did say that Light League Yagami is in the game, he is not a playable character because they said, Jesus fucking Christ, how broken would he be? <laughs> What's your name again? So <laughs> Gray! <laughs> Except it wouldn't work on Goku because his real name is Kakarot. How do I spell yes. that? Monkey D. Luffy. Okay, yes. heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> but the fact that they decided to make, you know, kind of a Naruto um, style... Uh, what is it? Uh, Naruto... Oh, shit. It was, a, it was a, like a 3D arena style fighting game. Yeah. Three versus three... Except one shared life meter, which was kind of weird. But to just have to just have you know the biggest anime we weeaboo, uh, you know, fan fiction wet dream. Deja and I don't play fighting games, and we were watching this, and we were going, "Yeah, yeah, I, we, we might we might buy that." We don't even. I, we're, I'm we're, not big on fighting games either. It, it, this was just more one of those. I have to play this because this looks dumb. Yeah. Well, so. I'm I'm entertained at the fact that there's going to be two relatively. I mean, assuming this does well, two relatively well received Dragon Ball style fighting games because you have the Dragon Ball characters and Jump Fighters, and then you have the Dragon Ball Fighter Z. Yeah, still and, also, and, and Fighters is doing really well right now. Yeah. yeah. So the thing to keep in mind, too, is this was, a, I believe this is based off of a series Bandai Namco was making called Jump Z, I think was the name of it, mm -hmm. where it's basically just like all the characters from like the, the various Shonen Jump magazine, uh, the, the publication that comes out in uh, Japan, and they just basically just did a Smash version of it, where it's just like Three or four people on a two D two D platform fighter, and yeah, like, that was that was a three DS, wasn't it? Yeah, it, it, it's actually a series. They've got like three or four games, I think. Jump has been having a pretty big initiative to get more into video games. They made a deal with Nintendo where they're basically doing like a compilation of the old uh, 
of all the old jump Nintendo games. So like the old Dragon Ball game or like all that stuff. Yeah. Um, like they're they're trying to make a pretty big push into this. And considering how big and how much cultural cachet that uh that jump has over there, I mean jump is as iconic in Japan as freaking yes. Disney is over here. Yes. Yeah. So that's big. Yeah. It's it's, and, it's a pretty sizable thing to be like, here's a 3D fighter with some pretty hefty graphical comp- uh, components being put into this. That's just going to be like Goku fighting Jojo. Yeah, like Goku fighting Jojo or Naruto going up against Frieza or... I, I will not be surprised if we see another jump release next E3. I feel like they're... Oh yeah, this game is a long ways away. Yeah. But... yeah. So I, I, I think this is just the start for what Jump is trying to do at this point. Yeah. And I think they have the... I, I think that they are totally prepared to do something like this because they've got the kind of roster akin to something like you know, when the Capcom games and you have your Marvel games and all these games that really pull together all, all your character slots, even Smash. I mean, there are so many beloved series that Jump has put out that are also popular here in the States and worldwide that they could easily cherry pick main characters and, you know, fan favorites from all of their franchises and put together some sort of interesting concoction of a game. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, they have, they have. the places the place bannings are set, you know. Yeah, they have and, and then years comes... of characters to pull from. Like they can, they could put a game out every year for the rest of our lives and not run out of popular franchises to pull from. And Namco explicitly said as such that if you can think of a popular or beloved character in in in, in Shonen Jump. Odds are you could probably expect it in Jump Force. So it, it looks like it could be a really fun game. And I'm just glad it transitioned very well into Battletoads! I'm, I'm hope. Uh, uh, by the way, and we will go into Battletoads. I'm just, I'm really, because I didn't see any of them in it, but I hope they do a couple of the newer ones because I would so love to see my Hero Academia characters fighting the rest of the class. Yes! <laughs> That's gonna happen because that's the that's the current new hotness in in Japan. I hope, I hope, but like, it's new enough that maybe they'll hold off on it. No, they're no, no, I no, hope no. not. I hope not. So they they, they they chose they chose Naruto, Luffy, and Goku because to them those are the big. Uh, honestly, they're, they're right. They're the big three recognizable names in mm-hmm. the Western audiences. Yeah, I bet you if they did a similar trailer for Japan, there'd be My Hero Academia. There'd be... Bleach. Uh, Hunter Bleach. S. Hunter. Yeah, there'd be Hunter x Hunter. There'd be Fairy Tail. There'd be... Jojo. Um, Jojo. Um, yeah. Yeah, you get, you're you right. I, you, Let's be honest. I'm, I have a little nervousness. I'm a little nervous. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I think they could easily slip in one of those characters. Even in the U.S., I mean, the show's taken off here, too. If you gave me, you know, Deku as a character in that game, I think that that would still spark some interest. I would love that. But also things I would love? Battletoads is three-player (laughs) co-op! Couch co-op, but... Couch co-op is the best co-op. Thank you. It is. For, for just seeing, uh, you know, you know, probably the original Dark Souls platforming hell that is that is Battletoads. To just see that get revived. I don't think Rare's doing it. I think it's a different publisher this time around or different I, developer. But um, if it's Microsoft, it could be Rare. They own Rare. Right, but Rare is so busy with Sea of Thieves right now that basically what Microsoft and Rare has been doing has been saying, here are some of these other franchises. We're going to give them to other other teams so that Rare can continue working on Sea of Thieves. You, hey, maybe you mean Sea of no content? Yeah, may, maybe if it's not <clears throat> Rare working on it, then it'll actually be like a stable, not glitchy game in the end. Because the original Battletoads, yeah. as much as we love it, was, was pretty flawed. It's pretty flawed and terrible. I mean... 
also, let's all keep in mind too that I believe there was a couple sections in the game that were designed to basically just chew through your lives. Yeah. Oh yeah. This was memorization the game. Yeah, and uh, apparently it was announced that um, Rare was partnering with Delala Studios or Delala. I don't know how you pronounce that. Yeah, that's that's a new one to me. Yeah, th- it was announced on YouTube that uh, Rare was partnering with Delala Studios to revive the series. And when I saw this, uh, somebody messaged me about Battletoads, and I'm like, great, because I never beat the first one. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't think many people have been the first one. I think more likely than not, they just watched a speedrun of Battletoads. You, 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 know, <laughs> you, know who pro- you know who probably yeah. beat it? Bit Brigade. Yeah, probably. <laughs> I only beat it with the infinite lives cheat. That's the only way I beat it. Well, I mean, you kind of have to. It's like the only way I managed to beat Ikaruga. <laughs> mm. So. Um, and... I think the last thing I want to talk about that came out of the Microsoft press conference is Cyberpunk 2077. I kind of wish they showed some, like, actual gameplay instead of another, you know, visual trailer. Because all I've been hearing is that it's a first-person RPG. And it's like, well, that's great, but you showed absolutely no proof of this. <laughs> so... For, so, just, just to briefly go into it, because I love how they did the presentation for it. Um... For those unaware, Microsoft was ending their press conference, and then they, quote-unquote, got hacked, <laughs> and CD Projekt Red, quote-unquote, uploaded the trailer for Cyberpunk 2077. And they eventually talked to the... They did have a presence on the E3 show floor, and they did have people get invited into behind-the-doors, off-hands demo of... Cyberpunk 2077. And people have been reporting on what they have seen out of that game, and the vast majority of them are just fawning over the, the looks and the visuals and the sounds and detail being shown to the well, game. That's all we can really fawn over, because they didn't show gameplay. Um, There was some mention of gameplay in terms of like for the people behind the, with the demos. Okay. Um, so, with what was reported that I read there's going to be two types of leveling. One is an actual character level, and the other is called street cred. And the more street cred you have will unlock more gear you can get and more missions you can do, things like that. Well, the actual character level will be, like, more perks, more upgrades, more... So it's a fame level, basically. Yeah. All right. Um, They also said more about um, how you can upgrade... V, your main character, is going to be a, a customizable, so you can be male, female, whatever, um, with character creation. And they said that they're trying to do a minimalistic HUD thing, and say that the reason why there's a HUD is because you have a cybernetic eye. Ah, right. well, hey, that's a... Cyberpunk is kind of the one place you can get away with that. Yeah. That or a Mech Warrior game. Yeah, and, and... I, I, I guess, I guess it, for me, it's just kind of, you know, everyone else seems to be so pumped for this, but it's like, I, I want to see more before I make a decision. Yeah. More, more cyberpunk is always a good thing to me, but I didn't see any, I didn't see anything for me to get excited about yet. Yeah. We need more information. All right, fair enough. It's good that it's there. How's that? It's good that it's there, but. I I need more meat to something to start get to get excited about it. Alrighty. Um. <laughs> sorry. That's all, that's all I had. Okay. Next conference? No, no. Uh, I got no. I got two more things to rent. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, we well we kind of glossed over the Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. We never really discussed that. The new From Software game. Hey, that, that looks like looked, it had a pretty cool concept. That I love like it. I love the skeleton hand. A prosthetic. It's, I mean, it's a, it's a magic prosthetic, but it's a prosthetic. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Skeleton hand. But it look, it definitely looked like they were kind of taking like the Bloodborne style of combat and just ratcheting it up to eleven. Or, like a very movement based, very just kind of lo- lots of dodging, jumping. Oh my god! From software, learn to 
jump. <laughs> you don't want to say that too loud, Ronnie. People will get ideas. <laughs> it's like the dollar oh, trying to get upstairs. But no, uh, I mean, it's, I it's, it's seriously like it looked really good. I, I'm like, I'm, I'm uh, a little, I, I'm, I was pleasantly surprised at, at it, even though I was hoping Shadows Die Twice is going to be a new Tenchu game. Don't worry, you got that out of Sony. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, and the other, and the other one I was going to bring up um, was the, and I, I, I think I'm getting the name right, the Awesome Adventures of Captain Kid, the new Captain, kid that, yeah, the one. Uh, it's the Awesome Adventures of Captain Spirit. Spirit, not kid. Sorry. Yeah. Which well, he is a kid, but yeah. But uh, the one that's supposed to take place in the Life is Strange universe. Uh, that is it coming out yeah. soon. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, they, it's I, on, on June, uh, June 26th, and it's free. Yeah, the first episode's free, I believe, at the very least. Yeah. So, like, I the fact that it takes place in the Life is Strange universe. And it's about his kid and his imagination, but because life is strange, his imagination's probably fucking real. Like, it's just... It it really kind of tickled my fancy. Drugs will do that. Yeah, I... Apparently so. <laughs> I don't take drugs, so instead I play games that are like taking drugs. So, have you guys played the Life is Strange series? Yes. Nope. Um, so then, Ronnie, maybe you noticed. Um, did you notice that Hot Dog Man made a cameo in one of the kids' sketches? No, but I wish I did. <laughs> yeah, it was one of the first things I noticed. Um, and it's, Hot Dog Man isn't even a big thing in the games, but it's just this little thing that they have in like their memories. And, but, and Life Strange was just such a wonderful game that I'm totally willing to give them a chance on this. Oh, it's an amazing game. And the thing I kind of like about this is that it's definitely a risk because it would be so easy to make another Life is Strange game where it's just another adventure of Max and, and Chloe, depending on how the game ended. Um, but I know that Don't Nod was very specific about their story is closed. They just gave you the prequel with uh, Before the Storm that, that gave you Chloe's story. And that but, the closure, and that was it. And that was it. And you actually got to meet Rachel in that game, which is a big part of the original Life is Strange. But this is... They, and they flat out said it, and I don't remember which conference. It was either Square or Xbox. I don't remember. But they flat out said, this is not Life is Strange 2. This is another story within that universe. And I would love if they just kept making other weird games in that universe, but all of them are completely different than each other. Absolutely. And I agree with that because I'm now more curious. And I also like the fact that the Life is Strange stories that I played are not going to get diluted with them trying to milk it too much. That's that's the thing. When you have a game that has a strong world and story to it, you don't need to to pigeonhole that into a single genre or single style of game. If your focus is on that universe, you can go everywhere with it. But right. you got to do that early so that the so that people don't associate the game with that specific style. Exactly, or with that specific character. Exactly. Because anybody who played the original Life is Strange was probably drawn to it for the entire... It's very... I hate to use this term because it's got, it's got an ugly name, but it's very hipster. Um, there's a... <laughs> <laughs> but I mean that in kind of a good way. There's a indiness that really runs through that game. You're playing as a teenage girl with a camera. It's set in, like, Oregon, I believe, if I remember correctly. You know, it's very... It's very you know, indie punk rock. It's very indie. It's very punk rock. It's very, you know, sort of guitars and, and feelings and that sort of thing. And to take this new game, and it's about a little kid with a ravenous imagination, mm -hmm. I'm sure there are people who probably would look at that and be turned off because, oh, well, I got into Life is Strange because I liked the music and the characters felt like me. And now that there's not... You know, two girls running around I, with green hair, it's not my game anymore. And I, I think, think it's very daring for them to not do that. Yeah, I think the core piece for Life is Strange that goes into this is Life is Strange felt very genuine. It and I, did. And I Other feel than like. Other some of the bad dialogue. But. Yeah, but, uh, but yeah, and, and video games have bad dialogue. That's just yeah. the thing. 
Um, but I feel like the Awesome Adventures is keeping that like that genuineness. Yes, absolutely. Okay, I... we, we, we've hijacked this long enough, I think. Okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I could keep talking about this with you for an hour, but I there's other press conferences we need to get to. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this will, be, it's only been an hour. <laughs> yeah, there, there'll be a side podcast of just Ronnie and Shanna squeeing oh. about this for, for an hour oh. and a half. Oh, Gears of War also has a game that's just pop figures and a game that's just tactics that looks like XCOM. The end. <laughs> that was all that was left on my notes. <laughs> the end. So the the one that uh, the conference that went up after that was Bethesda, I believe. Yes. All right. All right. So the guy that walked out for the Bethesda conference. As a Penguins fan, I am triggered by the fact he wore a capital Stanley Cup champion shirt on his way out. <laughs> um, but he then he immediately Walmart. insulted Walmart Canada, so he got his points back. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> the but fact that it started with a random musical performance, which the crowd was so not into in the least. I felt really bad for Andrew WK. <laughs> <laughs> He did his best. I don't even know who he is, but he did his best. I, I like the song. It's a good song. Because it pretty much covers a lot of anime FMVs. Well, he was basically a guy who had a hit in the, I want to say, early 2000s. And his whole thing was just he wore he wore all white and had the long, messy hair. And all of his songs were really happy, heavy metal songs. So I think his first hit was the one um, that was basically just saying party over and over and over again, like party hard, party hard or whatever. So he had that kind of thing going for a while, but then he sort of disappeared and now he's leading the Bethesda conference. Well, he did the, th he did the theme for Rage too. That's why he did the, he did right. the yeah. performance. Yeah. So like he's in, at least he's involved in the game. In some sense, yeah. yeah. Well, I think I saw somewhere that he does a voice in the game as well. Oh, maybe like a cameo voice or something. Yeah, not like a not a main character, but I believe he has a cameo as... From what I recall, I think it was some sort of item that you pick up that was like one of those singing fish on the wall, but it was something else, but he does the voice of that. It was better than the one at the beginning of the Ubisoft press conference, but we're not there yet. Oh, we'll get there. What do you mean? You, you didn't like the Ubisoft conference opening? I like that one. <laughs> I like just, pandas. Just, I like pandas. I'll start with that. I, I'm going to be honest. I, although I don't certainly don't mind musical numbers and, you know, dance dances and whatnot. They kind of have their own place in E3 is not it. Yeah. Well, Fair enough. okay. The funniest part is I think Ubisoft had the best and worst example of that, but we'll get to both of those. Yeah. So after after Rage Two was Doom Eternal, I believe. Nope. Right. We went into Elder Scrolls, the card game. Uh, yes, Elder, Elder Scrolls Mobile. Yeah. Right. I, you know, I I I just just I took a brief look at this and I went, okay, it's Bethesda, so that means it's the Elder Scrolls Wolfenstein Fallout show. That yeah. is literally all that's on my notes, dude. You, you just <laughs> nailed it. Okay, moving you on. <laughs> so, yeah, you are um, not wrong. I try, so after that... Yeah, then, Doom Eternal was, was the only one I actually am looking forward to. Well, we got, was, we, got the, we got the Wolfenstein following the main character's twin daughters. Once yeah. again, it's going to be co-op. The obligatory co-op game that every single one of the press conferences has. Mm-hmm. Um, and then after that was Fall 76 information? Yep. Yeah. Fall 76, yeah. and then they ended with Elder Scrolls 6. Well, they ended with a couple things. Well, but, and okay. Starfield, but they didn't show anything just out of, hey, it exists! Alright, so, <laughs> so to go into Fall 76 a little bit more, they said it's taking place in West Virginia. You're going to be playing a person from Fall 76, a prequel to all the other games. Yeah, you're coming out of the vault at the predestined time that you were supposed to. Hang on one second. It's 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 the first. It's basically the first of the uh, vaults to open. Yeah. And, and, and you're just heading out, you know, to explore this, you know, new America for the first time, and to start, and you know, start rebuilding from the the fallout. And yeah. with the big thing. Yeah, sorry. 
we, he, and here's here was kind of my, you know I understand the try to basically be Elder Scrolls Online with guns. I get this, but I just I just feel like some games probably should not be online multiplayer, and I feel this is one of them. Because one of the big features in this game, not only is just building bases, but you can get nuclear codes to access actual nukes. And use them on your and use them on the other players. So What the, the, that is the most ab above and beyond form of griefing I have ever seen in my entire life. It's it's basically like it it's basically rust in the Fallout world, and they're trying to get that younger demographic that plays the the Rust games and the uh, I forget what the big name of the big other one is, um, but trying to get that that audience to play it and then hopefully get them to migrate into the regular Fallout games. Like that's that's what they're trying to do so that they have a future because the Fallout games skew older than a lot of video games do, and they never right. really caught on with younger people. They're trying to get the Fortnite crowd. Yeah, kind of. Well, <laughs> Fallout a Battle Royale! Yeah, kind of. And also, they, 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 did, they did say a couple other things post-conference. One, the nuke is not just going to be a thing of griefing. It's also going to create a, a new high-level like raid, basically, you can do. Yeah. Um, they gave some yeah, more information. It's, just, it's better ways to go about making those high level areas than dropping a goddamn nuke. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's Fallout. No, that's actually the best way to do it. And it's just, it's just a, such a weird thing. It's like this is going to be a online only, instanced, server based game where you play with at most dozens of other live human beings. It's going to be very intimate. It's going to be very like random encounter based. I think if, with how they've described it, and other than like other than there's no really other humans you run into. The only people you run into that are not an actual person are going to be NPC robots and yep. an NPC over overseer. Every, every human is a, is going to be another player. That's what they were saying. Everything else is either going to be a, a robot, like, um... Which artwork. gets me nervous. Like, I'm fine with an online multiplayer Fallout, but I'm worried that there's not... that they're not going to touch on story in any meaningful way. Yeah, I, I don't think it's going to be very story-driven. But I, and I think even if they get even if they get the Rust crowd, if they don't... If they can't pepper what makes fallout good in this game then you're never going to get them to switch over because this it will they'll they may as well not name it fallout because it's not that game it's not anything to do with them like have an online multiplayer where there's no other npcs but drop but if you want a story drop hints in there drop things in there and they can do that and i hope they do uh, and and the other thing that was mentioned have was, the, back was the was the was there's a base building thing, and mm -hmm. they've said that this is going to be a base you can build wherever. You can also relocate it whenever you want. Uh, how the hell are you going to re relocate a base that you built? That's like probably hundreds Computer of hours. Computer system. I know. It's just like this. The the amount of graphics could, to think about moving the, the houses and things like that. It's just, I don't know how that's going to be working out of the box, so to speak, on release. There's there's going to be bugs with the build, base building. I can't oh, guarantee it. I'm ready, I'm ready to build my little cul-de-sac to raise my Fallout children. We're going to get nuked. Uh, this this is, is not going to be an episode of Ed, Ed, and Eddie Fallout. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just, I... I there's so many questions and things that didn't get answered during the press conference that didn't even really get answered post press conference. They got some questions answered, but then more questions were raised, and they and then it just ended up being a case of like, this is new, this is an experiment. We admit this. We're not certain this is going to be amazing for us or not. We hope. 
yeah. we hope you guys enjoy it. We we but it's it, basically it was just announced. Yes, it was announced slightly before E3, but like we like it's we we're not gonna get everything right now. Like they need to leave people wanting because they're gonna need to drop more hints at what the game is as it gets closer to release. And let's also keep in mind too, this game releases in November? November 14th. Yeah, this game releases in five months. And and based on what was talked about and described, I'm not even sure the game's fully done yet. I don't even know if it's fully out of alpha and the beta, based on what was described to us. Well, they did say that they were doing a beta, I believe. They gave it a cute name, actually. They called it, I wrote it down, Break It Early Test Application. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah th- that is the best thing for beta ever. I love that name. Break that is, it early, test it, it was test app, whatever. That, that, is a, that is a perfect way to make beta a, a real acronym. <laughs> yeah, and, but like, there, they, there was no release date given for the beta. There was no real information given on how to get into the beta. And is this going to be a thing of like, is this just, just us being free QA testing? for them or what more likely i mean it's probably just early access to the game you might get like a discount on the full release or whatnot and really the point is to just break the break the game yeah i know (laughs) the best the best tester you never knew you had you had and 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 then they follow okay so so does everyone feel that they talked about fall 76 enough I, yeah, I, yeah. I, I'm I'm ready to move on. Okay, so let me follow up the, the, this the just, just just follow this line here. All right, you start with the high of Rage Two, then you get Wolfenstein the, with the twins. Like that, that looks interesting. Now you've got um, Doom Eternal, and then you start talking about all the scrolls online and stuff. And like people are like, okay, fine, whatever. Get to the meat me of the thing. Then you get to this big selling point of Fall Seventy Six, and people are left kind of going like. Yeah, I'm not sure. And then they spend 15 minutes, like 10 minutes, talking about Elder Scrolls: The Blades. Oh, that's which, the iPhone game, yeah. Yeah, that's the, the iPhone dungeon game. crawler. Jesus Christ, why? Yeah. It, 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 like, and like literally everyone, and uh, maybe this is just me, but did you guys also notice a very definite tonal shift in in Todd's voice? when he went talking about this like cautious and tentative excitement for Fallout 76 to being a rather bland low-key talk about uh, Elder Scrolls The Blades I did kind of notice I, that yeah I, I really didn't pick pick that up but I mean it just it, it, it looked like such a cheap sell oh my god like this is this is to me, I saw this and I thought he is not excited for this. He is doing this because the shareholders and the CEOs think that getting Elder Scrolls into the mobile market is how they're going to make a bunch of free money. Hey, they they do it right. I mean, freaking South Park didn't made bank. Yeah, but with what was shown, I don't think they're gonna get a whole but lot and, of money out of it. And with how what in with how it looked and how demanding I'm sure the resources are gonna be, I'm sure even with with my shiny new cell phone, I'm sure I'm only gonna get half an hour's playtime out of it before it's gonna be I need to be plugged in to an AC. Yeah, are you, are you doing your best Brian impression? No, but uh, th- thanks for that mental yeah. note. And like, th- like that was the point too. I, was this thing. I, I love you too, asshole. <laughs> <laughs> this is, this is Brian. <laughs> <laughs> but that's my point. Like, th- this game looks so like, he, and he said like it's going to be a full fledged game. It's not just going to be a a mobile cash in. But then it just makes it sound even worse to me. It's like it's gonna be a game. Like you're gonna put this on the Switch and be like, "Here's like a twenty-dollar game that like you guys can enjoy while we work on Tada Elder Scrolls Six. But like, well, no. Uh, what that- I what I gathered from saying it was a full game was it's gonna be like they did with the uh, the Mobile Kingdom Hearts, where it is part of the story. It is literally like you need that to actually 
like get the complete story of all the games. I guess, but even then, I'm just I'm very. I th- this to me is a terrible thing to see. This should be a thing that should be on Switch, consoles, PC, whatever. And even if it's only like twenty bucks, like this could be yes. a cheap little like Skyrim engine, twenty bucks. If, here's a, here's a side story related to Skyrim, and sort of like a while Skyrim is happening, what's happening in I don't know Morrowind or what's happening in Tamriel. The, 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 the Tamriel proper area. Mm-hmm. In my notes here, Elder Scrolls Blades is a freemium game. It is free to play, but there will be in-app pur- purchases. Yeah, yeah. In, in the form right. of potions and shit like that. And just I, So, the, uh, yeah. To me, I, I, I don't know if anyone know. else had anything to add to Bethesda's conference, but I just thought this one sucked. Like, a, just a notch above EA. Sucked. If you like Wolfenstein and you like Fallout 76 and you're excited for Elder Scrolls 6, I imagine this is probably the best thing in the world for you, but I still haven't played any of the new Wolfensteins. I've heard they're good. Fallout 76, even if it's good, is not my kind of game. And, okay, Elder Scrolls 6 is a thing. We don't know a damn thing about it. So, yeah, yeah. this well, why, this is not super it? exciting. Why yeah. announce Elder Scrolls Six? This is not like Metroid Prime Four last year, where because they did a lot of else. people, uh, because a lot of people were not sure if Metroid was ever going to come back. Because so they, even they, just to, even so even just to say, hey, it's here, is a good thing. But everyone knows Elder Scrolls Six is going to happen. Everyone, you know, I, I know this it, with all the critical success of Morrowind. Oblivion and Skyrim, you know damn well Elder Scrolls 6 is happening. So if you're going to actually show something Elder Scrolls 6 related, actually show more than just it's a thing. To have a good conference, you have to have a bomb to drop. You have to have good gameplay and a lot of other things, but you gotta have at least one big bomb to get people talking, and that's what Elder Scrolls 6 was for them. But they didn't have like I assume it's not far enough along for them to have sh- to show anything. So basically, all they could do was go, Elder Scrolls Six. It's a thing. So and and same thing with Starfield. Why you know when you announce a new IP, don't just say, oh yeah, it's a new IP. Actually, show something more to it. We think, we're going to announce Splatoon yeah. by showing you a bucket of paint. That's it. It's the bucket of paint. <laughs> mm-hmm. We're moving on. We're moving on. <laughs> well played, Ronnie. That's it's you know I you know I saw I'm I'm personally with all these Elder Scrolls spin-offs, I'm kind of I feel sort of Skyrimmed out. I I I get the impression like okay, Skyrim's a great game and it's still a great game. I still pick it up from time to time, but all these spin-offs and all these, you know, little side games, I I feel a little fatigue. Like, yeah, then they announced, like, this little cock tease of Elder Scrolls VI, and I'm like, yes, we already know that's going to be a thing. It's probably not going to see the light of day for a hundred years, but we know it's coming out. But, Brian, don't you want to play Skyrim for Alexa or Etch-A-Sketch or the, or the Samsung fridge? I, I, want, I want to see Skyrim for Tamagotchi. <laughs> Drink a potion, Alexa. Drink a potion. I want to see Skyrim on the on the Intellivision. So, uh, so <laughs> Skyrim on the Atari Twenty Six Hundred. So for me, did you see the Halo on the Atari Twenty Six Hundred? <laughs> no, but I've seen Mario on the Atari Twenty Six Hundred. Mm-hmm. So, so for me, this was probably the worst conference of, at E Three. Wow, even worse than EA. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. Okay. So, so and, and here's the reason why they showed games people were not necessarily excited about, but they got their interest, and they got their interest built up through Rage Two, Wolfenstein, and and Doom. Then you go into literally 20 minutes of people having questions, wondering how your game's going to work, how things are going to play never answering these questions and you take this confusion 
throw them into a fairly focused talk about a, a freemium game with one of your most important and storied franchises, and now you leave people with this bad taste in your mouth, and then you think you're going to entice them away with this bad this bad taste in their mouth by going, oh, by the way, here's Starfield, and here's Elder Scrolls Six. That's not even, like... That's like that's like slapping someone in the face and then like trying to give them a lollipop afterwards. Like, no, you're not, that's not gonna that's not how it works. Like you you can't just like assault and and like brutalize your fan base, leave them there naked and lying on the ground, and then be like, oh you know, sorry, and, and throw like a half use handkerchief at them. It's just I, I really don't know why they thought they could get away with this for another year in a row. This is the second year they've had a very bad conference. Yeah, well, you know. And well, we're, we're, we're going to move on to, to bigger and better stuff um, after we take a break, because we've gone about 75 minutes, and we've got a shit more to go. This might- three conferences. We have Six more to go. Well, this might be a three half podcast. <laughs> thirds. <laughs> we call that periods, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> periods, like a hockey game. <laughs> That's, uh, thank you. You 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 saw through the joke. Very good. Uh, <laughs> And the third half is just Nintendo, right? It's, 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 it, it might be the way this is going. Um, so we've got plenty more to criticize and fawn over and fan squee. I know Shanna has Shanna promised me fan squeeing, so there's going to be that. Well, I up. took a page Fansque- worth of notes for fan squeeing. Okay, We're ready. I, I, I got that too. All right, we are ready. <laughs> so, uh, just hold on for the same games. Uh, it, it, they might be. So, in the meantime, uh, replenish your provisions. Uh, you know, get take a power nap, do whatever. Uh, we're gonna throw some music at you, but when we come back, more E three. You're listening. Remember, if you walk away from your computer, you're watching. Thank you, GLaDOS. Uh, You're listening to our E3 2018 recap on downloadable content. We'll be back. 